Black Op Radio presents 50 Reasons for 50 Years. Why the Warren Commission may be the greatest fraud perpetrated on the American public. Now your host, Len Osanek. 1959. Lee Oswald mysteriously gets a dependency discharge from the Marines, supposedly to look after an ailing mother. A week later, he's on a freighter heading to the Soviet Union. This is the time period that saw a flurry of activity from U.S. intelligence agencies in the false defector program. Researcher Bill Simpich explains. Oswald, he gets himself out of the service in the summer of 59 by saying, I gotta take care of my mama out in Texas. A candy box fell on her nose. She's been terribly injured. When he gets to Texas, he doesn't stay there more than 72 hours. He's running off to New Orleans. And within a couple days, he gets on a freighter. Nobody takes a freighter. Webster is another American. During this era, there's about 20 Americans who were living in the Soviet Union. Webster had spent a few months there. He was part of the whole operation, setting up the American Exhibition in Moscow in 1959. It's the site where Nixon and Khrushchev had their kitchen debate. While that exhibition was being broken down, early September or so, Webster disappears. And Webster is a plastics technician. All of a sudden, just poof, vanishes. And that period, when they don't know where Webster is, is precisely when Oswald comes into play. They finally find out, early October, where Webster is, and, and now Webster has actually decided to defect. Oswald gets off at like the second stop, and he hops his way over to Helsinki in a matter of days. He gets across the border almost instantly. Now, he's in the Soviet Union. Days before, he was like drifting in a freighter, you know, putt, putt, putting his way uh, through the North Atlantic. When Oswald actually got to the Soviet Union, he started making all these threats to reveal to the Soviets all that he knew about Navy radar installations in the Pacific. He never quite said the word U-2. He kind of tap danced around that. When he made those kind of threats, he got the attention of uh, people at the embassy. And I'm talking about the American embassy in Moscow. Richard Snyder was the guy who held the fort there as a consul, and he was the guy who Oswald went to when he got into the Soviet Union saying, I'm going to defect to the Russians, and I want to renounce my citizenship. Please let me renounce my citizenship. And Snyder comes back at him and says, well, actually, we don't take renunciations on Saturday. You come back on Monday, and Oswald never came back. Since all these embassies were bugged, and the American one was certainly no exception, the question has to be asked, was he really saying this for the Russians' benefit? Red Cap was a program focused on dealing with Soviet counterintelligence, using counterintelligence against the Soviets. Red Skin was a program about trying to get people inside red countries, usually people like travelers or tourists. In a lot of documents, Oswald is labeled as a tourist. It makes you wonder, well, maybe he got into the Redskin program. They would always be looking for ways to get Soviets to defect in place so they could be spies for the United States. Or failing that, getting a United States citizen into the Soviet Union using their observations, even as mundane as where the telephone poles and fire hydrants were. Oswald could have been either one of those things or none. We do know that the Red Cap program kicked into gear just about a month before he went out there. I think, given the strong physical resemblance the two guys had, that using Oswald was a way to get inside the Soviet's head, literally see how they responded to him. When the Warren Commission gets a hold of these documents from both Snyder and from the Navy, and these Washington Post articles that Johnson's written about Oswald back in 1959, they keep whiting out somebody's name. They're not whiting out Mr. Oswald's name, they're whiting out the name of Robert Webster. Oswald's return to the U.S. was financed by a State Department loan. A debriefing on his arrival was routine, but the CIA denied for years that one had even taken place. On his return, Robert Webster was debriefed over several weeks. 
Oswald's debriefing only took one day, even though he had offered classified information to the Soviets. The State Department loaned him more money to settle in Dallas. Stay tuned for the next installment as we expose week after week 50 lies the Warren Commission would like you to believe.